In Australia, the Green Reaper AIDS commercial is one of the best known uses of fear in advertising. In 1987, the Australian government made this commercial and used actors dressed up as the Grim Reaper, the cloaked skeletons in the video, to make people fearful of HIV and AIDS. The Grim Reapers were shown at a bowling alley and they were bowling down people, not bowling pins. These were everyday people, mums, dads, young people and old people. The government was hoping that the use of fear would change people's attitudes towards safe sex. Fear is a commonly used tool in advertising campaigns generally. Recent road safety ads in Australia have included shocking footage of car crashes aimed at getting people to have better attitudes towards driving. And anti-smoking ads have shown gruesome video of people suffering with smoking-related illnesses. So, is fear an effective way to change people's attitudes? Janice and Feshbach in 1953 varied the extent of fear in a message about proper dental hygiene. They gave their participants a 15-minute lecture about dental hygiene accompanied by illustrated slides. There were three different versions of this lecture, each arousing a different level of fear. In the strong fear version, the message emphasised the painful consequences of tooth decay and diseased gums and described other health threats associated with poor dental health, including blindness and kidney damage. For example, Participants were told, If you ever develop an infection of this kind from improper care of your teeth, it will be an extremely serious matter because these infections are really dangerous. They can spread to your eyes or your heart or your joints and cause secondary infections which may lead to diseases such as arthritic paralysis, kidney damage or total blindness. In the moderate fear version, these dangers were described in a less threatening way. In the low fear message, the message didn't focus much at all on the consequences of poor dental hygiene, but instead participants were given information about how teeth develop and what functions they served. The researchers then measured how much participants conformed to the message, how much they were persuaded by it. So, what do you think they found? <laughs> 